Hi everybody, Professor Gassini here. In this component of the lecture, we're going to be speaking about regular expressions. Now, all a regular expression is is a compact language for finding, validating, replacing, or splitting large text strings. There's a couple of examples that I think will help you understand or motivate the reason for learning regular expressions. Let's say that you had a very, very long document and that this document contained some email addresses, but you don't really know where those email addresses are. And let's say you want to extract those email addresses and validate which ones are legitimate email addresses. Well, a regular expression is one way that you could accomplish that. Let's say that within that same document, you had some repeated words that you wanted to clean up. A regular expression could also help you with that. And you can do incredibly specific things with regular expressions. And if you learn them, they really will pay dividends in your natural language processing life down the line. So uh, let me give you a, a specific example that I think helps motivate their power and flexibility. You can write regular expressions to do things as specific as finding every line in a document that contains the word bubble, but not the word gum or bath. So very powerful kind of search tool. Now in this class, when you're gonna be trying out regular expressions, you're gonna be doing it in Python. And Python has a library called RE, which stands for regular expression that can be imported very simply without any pip install functions or anything else. And the re library has four or five functions that are valuable. I'm going to show four of them here now, and then we're going to speak about the fifth one in a minute. Those four functions do the following things. The first one is called find all. It, as the name implies, allows you to provide a regular expression and some text, and it's going to give you all the matches. There's a second function called search, which again, as the name implies, takes a regular expression and some text, Searches through the document tells you, hey, here's the objects I found, and here's the locations I found them within the document. The third one's called split, which says, give me a pattern that you want me to match in this text, and I'm going to break the text up into small pieces, depending on wherever I found that match. And then the first, fourth one is called sub, which says, hey, tell me a pattern that you want me to find, what you want me to replace it with, and uh, the text that you want. And I'm going to run through every time I see this pattern that matches, I'm going to do the replacement for you. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. Let's talk about the most basic, simple, regular expression that we could ever write. Let's say that we have a sentence or some text, Jack is a boy, shown there in the middle. And we're interested in identifying where the first A is in that sentence. Well, the regular expression to identify where the first A is, is literally just the character A. So in Python, we would write, as we're showing there at the bottom of the screen, re.search, we put our regular expression, which is just the letter A, followed by the string that we want to search, Jack is a boy. And we could then identify using the dot span command where the, the location of the A is within the string. This says starts at, at position one, all the way to position two over here in the, in the string. And we could also find out exactly where it matched. And because we were looking for an A, obviously um, the thing that matched was an A. Now, there are going to be instances with regular expressions where you don't just care about finding the first instance of a match, but you care about finding every instance of a match. The way that you do that in Python is through the use of the re.finditer function. And what I'm showing here at the bottom of the screen, the code block, is an example of how to use re.finditer. Within the function, you can see that once again, I'm interested in finding the instance of A. So my regular expression is just the character A. And I'm also interested in finding that in the sentence, Jack is a boy. But by wrapping it in these square brackets you see here, I can get an output, as you see down here, that allows me to identify every instance of the match within the text. Importantly, and perhaps rather intuitively, um, you're probably not going to want to search for just one character at a time. You're probably going to want to search for at a minimum, more than one character at a time. And all you'd have to do in order to make that change is just update your regular expression. If we wanted to find ack, for example, in the text, Jack is a boy, we could simply update the regular expression to ACK and everything would flow through. Now, of course, what I've shown you about regular expressions up till now is kind of you know boring, so to speak. I mean, everything we've done is what you could already do in Microsoft Word or a Google Doc just by searching the document yourself. So. It's not very powerful in that respect. Well, what makes regular expressions powerful is, is not that you can search for exact text matches, but that there's the existence of things called meta characters that carry special meaning and enhance your search flexibility. 
So I'm going to show you some of these meta characters, not all of them. There's a huge number of these within regular expressions because, again, a regular expression is, is a language. It's just a very compact language for doing these search operations. A dot within your regular expression, for example, refers to any character other than a line break. If you wrapped, let's say, some characters within square brackets, which we're showing here on the right-hand side, this would mean, hey, take any one of the instances in here and match it, but only one of the instances within the square bracket. I know all of that seems a little vague when we're discussing it here at this level, so I think the best thing for us to do is to step through some examples. Okay, so let's come back to the sentence, Jack is a boy. And let's say now that we're interested in doing something slightly more powerful, we're interested in finding out where there is a J followed by an A or a white space followed by A, and we want the locations of those matches. If you take a look at the output there on the right-hand side, that's what we're interested in matching. J, A, and then white space A is, is the, what we're looking for within that string. Well, you can see that there's a regular expression that sort of follows logical notation in order to generate that. The parentheses means we group these two things together, the pipe character is a logical or, and so you read that regular expression. If I see a J or a white space followed by the character A, match it. And what you can see in the Python example uh, at the bottom there is that it does, in fact, extract those. That, again, was sort of a silly example, right? Because I can't think of any, uh, a reason why we'd want to extract a J or a white space followed by an A. But a common thing that people do want to do in a lot of documents is extract floating point numbers from those documents, right? So I might want to find every number that's embedded within a document. And let's read through this regular expression together just so that you kind of understand how they're read. First and foremost, you always read them from left to right. So the way I do it is, okay, I have a slash D here refers to an integer. So this says I have an integer. And then the plus says one or more of those. So, hey, find me matches within the text where I have one or more integer followed by a dot followed by one or more integers. But I don't really have to have that dot and uh, integer. So the things that come after the decimal point, I don't actually have to have them. That's what this, this um, parentheses in the question mark means. Question mark is your way of saying, I don't really have to have it. So if you run this regular expression on the text, you would get the output that you see there, which would match not only the number 45, but would match 92.3 in the text. So most of the time when we think about regular expressions, we think about finding things that match the expression. But there may be examples where you want to find things that do not match a particular expression, right? So for example, consider the problem of wanting to match file names where the extension is not exe. The way that you do this in a regular expression is with something called negative look ahead. And the negative look ahead there in the regular expression is highlighted with uh, in, in red specifically. So the question mark followed by the exclamation mark means, hey, read all the way up to this point in the regular expression. and any pattern that matches what's going to come next between the parentheses, which is the exe dollar, make sure you do not match on that. Okay, so for example, the exe dollar there would exclude any extension that ends in exe, but it would not exclude extensions that end in executable because the dollar sign there is the way of a regular expression saying the end of the line. Now, in all honesty, to do a proper deep dive into regular expressions and getting a lot of practice with this would probably take a lecture series in its own right. I'm exposing you to regular accessions here and just scratching the surface because if you really want to develop proficiency with NLP tools, it's important that you are familiar with regular expressions.
They can be a little bit tricky to get used to because like any other language, there's usually more than one way to express the same idea. Because we're not going to be covering anything more than just a very basic introduction to these here in the lectures, I wanted to refer you to two additional resources you can use to learn more about regular expressions. First of those is a website called RexEgg, which contains several example expressions and what those expressions would match to. If you kind of just glance through those, if you get stuck when you're writing a regular expression, it helps. It certainly helps me when I'm doing it. And then I think the most useful tool actually for learning regular expressions is the one I've, I've put there on the right-hand side of the screen, Regular Expressions 101. What I wanted to do here was just open up the website and give you a tour of it so that you understand how to use it, because I really think that actually playing around with this tool will help you learn regular expressions much more quickly than reading a bunch of my slides or reading a book or something of that kind. So what regular expression uh, or regex101.com allows you to do is first of all, select the flavor of regular expressions because the way that they're implemented, there's subtle differences depending on the language. Once you've selected your language, in my case, you can see I've selected Python here. You can put some test strings, which I've, I've put here just for the sake of uh, demonstration, and you can then insert a regular expression up here in the top. Now, let's just for the sake of demonstration, put in the word dog, and you can see that uh, four symbols get matched when I insert the word dog. Now, one of the common things that we might be interested in doing is identifying um, not only dog, but all the instances of the plural of the word dog. So I could come in here and say, I care not just for identifying the word dog, but I optionally care about if it has an S at the end. And now, as you can see, um, this gets matched. Now, I put these, these parentheses here just because I think it makes it easier to read. But another way that you could write this is to simply re remove the parentheses and then the question mark here, which just says match between 0 and 1 of these identifiers is referring to the S. If you ever get confused about what's referring to what, by the way, one of the really nice things about this software is you can just hover your cursor over and it's going to kind of tell you how the regular expression is, is going to run this when it's looking for a match. Okay, well, there's other neat things we could do with this. Let's say, as you can see, there's the word cats that also appears in this sentence, right? So I could come here and write a, a regular expression for the word cats, and you can see that, sure enough, all three uh, instances of the word cat appears. Now, this is a little bit um, simple from an example perspective. So let's, let's see if we can try something a little bit more sophisticated. Let's say that we're only interested in finding the lines where cat appears at the start of the sentence. Well, the way that we would do that is we add the caret operator. And as you can see on the bottom now, the only instance of cat that it picks up is this one right here, where it started at the sentence. Now, similarly, if we wanted to get it at the end, we would use a dollar sign. Now, when we add the dollar sign here, you're going to see it doesn't work, and I'm going to explain why. So let's put first and foremost our dollar sign character. Okay, well, what does it say? It says, hey, there's, there's no matches here. You know, I looked for the word cats, and there was no end. And, and that's because, actually, if we look at these strings, there is no string where there's cats, and then there's an actual end to the, uh, to the string. There's this period character here, which exists there. Now, there's a couple of ways that we could, we could go about um, fixing this regular expression to find all the words that end with cats. One way is we could put a dot here. Now, the dot here in regular expression language, if we hover our cursors over it, will match actually any character including the period that shows up in this sentence. I'm bringing this to your attention because even if I come here and if I change this to, let's say, cats x or cats question mark, you can see that this is still catching. Um, it's still catching uh, cats with one additional character thereafter. If we only wanted to match the instance where there was a period, the way you do that is by escaping the period character. So basically, anytime you have a special character, if you want to find the literal version of that in your string, 
The way you do it is you put this backslash character right before it. So this now says, let's come and find uh, C followed by A, followed by T, followed by S, followed by the literal period character, and then the end of the line. And as you can see, only one instance is found. Well, it may be the case that if we were searching through text, we may want to find where cats with a period ends or where cats with a question mark ends. How would we do that? Well, what we could do is we could come in here and we could say, you know, let's choose one among the set of things, which is what the square bracket means. One among the set of either a period or a question mark to match the outcome. Now, <clears throat> I'm showing you this because it's not both of these that it's going to be searching for. It's only going to be searching for one or the other. To illustrate, let me come down here and add a period, and you can see that this match no longer exists because, once again, it's looking for exactly one of these two. That's what the square bracket means, um, followed by the end of the line. So adding the period here breaks that. Okay. I'm showing you this because I really think that just playing around with regular expressions in regex 101 is the fastest way for you to learn about regular expressions. Another one of the really powerful things about this particular tool is that it provides some, some common quick reference guides here on the right hand side. Notice that it says if you want to find a single character, A, B, or C, you wanted to match a single one of those characters, you would do that by putting a square bracket, putting the characters A, B, and C, and closing the square bracket. And you can actually kind of scroll through this and see many different examples of the powerful kinds of common search operations that happen within a regular expression. Or if you find a regular expression online that you don't understand, one easy way to help you interpret it is to actually paste that regular expression here in the box and, and kind of put some sample text to see what it matches.